Hello designers, this is Angie from Raveners Design Academy. Welcome back if you're already subscribed and welcome here if you're new. I was trying to plan for this week's tutorial when I got a request in one of my previous video's comments asking for something on V-Ray camera setup. So this video will be the first part of a series on setting up your camera using several techniques that you can easily apply for different purposes. First, let's talk about setting up your camera for a regular old-fashioned perspective. To start any render in V-Ray, you first need to place a hypothetical camera somewhere in or around your space. So I'll take this little guy over here and place him in this corner. Then you need to adjust the camera's height. To do so, just type in your required height while using the look around tool. Next, to avoid a distorted render, you need to adjust your camera's field of view. My current field of view is 65 degrees, which is perfect for a wide render shot. To adjust the field of view angle, just type in a value. I'll go for 45. Now to put my camera view again in the same corner, you'll notice that not a lot of objects are visible to my camera. My go-to field of view is always between 65 and 45, and it depends on the aspect ratio I'm going to render at, as well as the overall composition of my current model. Any value over 65 or under 45 and your model's objects will either look stretched or morphed, which will make your render look bad. Now that we have the location, height, and field of view for the camera setup, let's talk about the angle. First thing you need to keep in mind is how much floor and how much ceiling is appearing in a shot. You don't want to completely hide either of them in your render or it will look cropped. You'll also want to find an angle that either shows everything in your model equally, the key elements only, or a focal point. It really all depends on what your aim is. I apologize for the storm brewing outside, but it's storm season in Alexandria. Anyways, I've chosen this spot and this angle because I want to show off the objects in this side of the room, but I also wanted to show that there is a walk-in shower which would be conveniently reflected in the mirror. Last but not least, always use SketchUp's two-point perspective camera option to point your camera in a direction that is perpendicular to the floor. This also helps eliminate any object distortion. Once you've found the perfect composition to render, you'll want to save that by either adding it as an extra scene by right-clicking here, or by navigating to View, Animation, Add Scene. If you've dealt with scenes before, you'll know that there's an annoying transition that happens when you switch between scenes. Going to Settings should get rid of that. Disable the transition and set the delay to zero. This is the scene that I've already saved, and it's basically the same one we just set up now. When it comes to setting up V-Ray to render the scene we just set up, there is an abundance of options over here. I have the aspect ratio set to widescreen, and my field of view is 65. These work very well together. But what if I want to focus on and render this sync only? I'll have to limit my aspect ratio a bit for sure, and that makes the image look distorted because I'm using a field of view of 65. I'll change the field of view to 45 and watch how all this distortion gets fixed. Much better, isn't it? Hey, 
By setting the SketchUp camera to a two-point perspective, I'm also fixing how the straight edge of the mirror is aligning with my safe frames border, and this will give me a clean and eye-pleasing render. You can play around with the camera's placement and height, but distorted objects make the most beautiful designs look odd and unappealing, so fixing your angle, field of view, and aspect ratio to work together is always in your favor. Here's the final render. Now we're off to talk about rendering a 360 degree panorama view, which is quite simple. The secret to a well-made panorama render is camera placement. You need to center your camera in the middle of your space to have equal viewing distance from all sides. To be able to find the center of your model, remove the ceiling and pick a wall to use as an anchor. Over here, I'll use the largest wall as an anchor. Next, I'll draw a line from the wall's midpoint on the floor that extends to the shower step, which is basically the opposite wall. I'll then use the midpoint of this line to place my camera. For the camera height, I have two options. I'll either measure the distance between the ceiling and the floor, which is 2.55, and choose the midpoint, which is 1.25, as my height. And that will give me equal distance when looking up or down when using a panorama image. Or I'll use the average human's height, which is 1.65, and go with realism. Of course, I'm using meters here. The angle here is more important than the height to be honest, otherwise I'll get a panorama with an askew ceiling or a tilted floor. Using the same line that helps me center my camera, I'll make sure that my camera is facing straight ahead forward by clicking and dragging while positioning the camera instead of just placing it. I just enter the value of my height to get my camera in place. Afterwards, I'll set SketchUp's camera as a two-point perspective to make sure that my camera is perpendicular to the floor. I always prefer to keep my panorama at the height of 1.65 meters, which is the average human height and it's also my height. Now the important part, which is actually rendering a panorama. In the asset editor, under the settings tab, there is the camera options and the render output options. These are the only two we will have to be tweaking for now. Under the camera, change the camera type to VR spherical panorama and in the render output you'll notice that the aspect ratio is now 2 to 1 that you cannot change. For the width and height, you'll need quite the big number because this image will be stretched into a sphere to be able to view it properly. The minimum resolution you can go for is 2000 height by 4000 width. Thank you. 
best resolution should be 4000 by 8000 and upwards. But 3000 by 6000 should work fine for now. Something to keep in mind, if your panorama isn't rendering properly or looks like a stretched image, it's probably due to keeping SketchUp's camera on two-point perspective. So change that to a regular perspective after saving the scene and, and that should fix the glitch. Here's what the final render looks like. I ended up rendering at a resolution of 2000 by 4000 which is the minimum for the sake of saving time. The quality is not bad. but it's going to be useless if I use it as it is. To be able to view and use a panorama picture, you'll need a 360 degree image viewer. My favorite free app for PC is the Ricoh Theta image viewer. You can download it by navigating to theta360.com or by searching for Ricoh Theta on Google. You can get the viewer for free by clicking on download and then scrolling to the basic app and clicking the download button there. Once the app is installed, launch it and this is what you'll get. Drag and drop your image in the app and you'll be able to view it as a 360. You can click and drag to rotate the image and see the different sides of the space. You can also view your image on a mobile phone or tablet by downloading a free app such as the 360 Image Viewer. And moving your hand around or wearing a VR box headset. To upload the image to social media or a website, you'll need to save it as a JPG format image first. And then right click the image and head to properties. Under the Details tab, you'll find the Camera Maker and Camera Model. In the Camera Maker, type in Rico, and in Camera Model, type in Rico Theta S in caps, and that's for Windows. I have no idea how to do that on Mac, but if you do, just leave it in the comments down below. Or, Download the EXIF fixer from this website. All links are in the description box below and extract the folder. Launch the app and load your image. Try to make it equal rectangular. If it doesn't work, that means your image will just be a panorama rather than a 360, which is not a problem for me right now. Check the insert fake camera data box and choose Rico Theta S. Then check the clear metadata box to clear all the old data of the image. Then click add metadata button to apply these changes. Try saying add metadata 10 times in a row. You are now free to upload this image directly to Facebook or embed it on any site that supports panorama and 360 degree photos. And that's it for part one of this series. Stay tuned for part two coming next week where we'll be talking about creating a section via the V-Ray mesh clipper and rendering a plan or a top layout view. Make sure you like this video if you found it useful and subscribe if you aren't so you get more videos like this every week. Thank you for watching and happy designing.